Today I'll be stripping this locomotive. Um, it has been put together really poorly. You can see all the glue on the handrails and it's dirty and, and all that. So we're going to strip it and repaint it. All right, here it is all primered now. Now what I did was took it all apart and then took the shell and soaked it in a container full of 91% alcohol for about four or five days or so. And then took a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and just kind of got all that old paint off there real good. And some of the areas, little crevices and stuff, use a toothpick if you need to to get down in there and get that old paint out of there. And it, old paint comes off pretty easy, especially if it let it sit for a couple of days. The alcohol won't hurt the plastic, at least not on these Atherin models. It hasn't on any of my models ever, so it's pretty good stuff. And then the paint I got, these are my colors, pure orange, yellow, black, and white. So these are just craft paints from your local Hobby Lobby or Walmart or whoever else sells this stuff. It's cheap. There's thousands of different colors, so matching colors is pretty easy. So now I spray these with my uh, airbrush, and I'll show you how you have to thin them, and I'll show you how I make my thinner. All right, this is my jug of thinner right here that I made. Just an old Gatorade um, container. But what I do is use the windshield washer fluid, the blue. I think that's from Walmart, a couple bucks. Distilled water, uh, a couple bucks maybe. 91% out rubbing alcohol. And this stuff here, I think it's uh, glycerine. So what we do is mix these two right here, half and half, 50-50. So what I'll do is take a cup and fill it with this, the washer fluid, and put it in my container. And then I'll take the same cup and fill it with the water and put it in my container. And there's my 50-50 mixture. Then I'll take about a teaspoon or a little bit less of alcohol and mix them with it. And then two to three drops of the glycerine and just put it in there, mix it. And then put the lid back on and just shake it all up real good. So enough thinner there to paint for forever, for a long time. And it only costs probably, it's all under 10 bucks. Let's put it that way probably. All right, we'll take a look at my airbrushes that I use. Uh, this one is a Badger 150. Probably one of the best ones I've used for this type of work. Can't really get any real fine lines with it, but for paint malls, it's great. At least for me. I haven't had too many problems. Every once in a while, I'll take it apart, give it a real good cleaning, stuff like that. I've had to replace a needle in it once. But I've had this thing for years, and uh, it's worked great. And then, this old Passage airbrush. And you can see what I paid for it. It was at a yard sale. It was like brand new when I bought it. I've used it a couple times. It's okay. Not as good as the Badger. And then uh, an old Mac Tools airbrush. Worked good for years. I don't use it much anymore. But it's pretty much identical to the Badger. Parts interchange and everything. So... I just, I haven't used it in a while. And then a new one I just picked up, um, Harbor Freight. It was like 19 bucks. And I figured I'd try it and it works great. It works as good as my Badger, I think. Now, I've not had it too long, so I don't know how long it'll last. But we'll see. And uh, this is the only new one I've ever bought. I, I bought this one, it was new but used bought off somebody same with that one by yard sale I think I got this one at yard sale for a few bucks too so I've got a lot of cool stuff from yard sales and then the compressors you know, I think this compressor came with that passage airbrush yeah still got sticker on it say 10 bucks so two dollars for that I had twelve dollar air twelve dollars I had a an airbrush with the compressor <laughs> and then this was another yard sale fine gave a couple bucks for it but they work great and i've had them forever but i'm about to upgrade to a, a little bit bigger compressor with the with the regulator on and everything so 
already got the compressor. I just gotta get the regulators and lines and stuff. But those work fine. You don't need nothing fancy. Just painting. So now we'll get this painted. I'll show you. All right, I'll show you all how I mix my paint for my airbrush. Take my little glass container here and my paint. Put some in there. Not too much. Really don't need very much. So, and then take up the center a little bit. Like I said, you want to do 50-50. So, see where your paint is. And then go about half four. So, and then I take old popsicle sticks and just stir it up real good. And after you do this for a while, you'll be able to tell, like, I'll be able to tell how my mixture is, how I like it. And it just takes some time to figure out how you like your mixture. So, like I said, 50-50 is a good starting point. Uh, don't spray good, just add a little bit more thinner. That seems like it's probably pretty good. Okay. So, and then, get back on there. Yeah, probably about enough in there to paint this little motor. And then I got my, my airbrush already. That in there. Got a little hanger over here. And I got these old uh, um, tube from Christmas wrap tube. And I just hold my engine shell right on here. And then I have a hair dryer handy. So what I do is I'll heat up, give it a little blow, heat it up just a little bit. It's not too close. Just keep it moving. This will help the paint dry. Right here. And I'll probably do about five coats of this color, probably, maybe six. Oh, yeah. Hey, keep your airbrush back a little six, seven inches from. See this real light coats. It doesn't cover real good the first couple times. So all you gotta do a bunch of passes. Usually five or six passes. And then I'll take the hair dryer. We'll dry it real fast. And keep it moving. About six, eight inches away from it. And you'll be able to see a change in it so you know it's dry in the paint. They go from a shiny to a, like a real flat.
Now it's all flat colored, flat look, no shine to it. So repeat that step about five or six times until you get good coverage. Might take a little more, more a little less, depending on the color. So I'll repeat that a few times and then I'll show you. All right, when you get done painting, you always want to make sure that you clean your airbrush out. As soon as you're done painting, it's the best. Don't let it sit around and dry up and all that. As soon as you're done painting, clean the airbrush out. And usually how I clean mine out is I'll take it in the house and go in, in the kitchen sink or something and take my little toothbrush and just rinse it all off real good. Rinse out the thing, get all the paint out of there and all that. Then I'll put a little water in the cup about half and spray it all the way through and then dump it out if there's any left in there and dump it out then put 91 percent alcohol back in there and that'll take the moisture and the water out of your gun and just run that through there for a minute or two just run the alcohol through there and get all the water out of it Think too much. A little stuff. And as you spray it, pop the container off. Spray out that last little bit that you got left in there, real good. There's straight sure nothing left in there. Just say how I do it. Then, boom, clean airbrush. Ready for next time. And then just dump your alcohol back in. Usually take that alcohol and then dump it back into my stripping pan. My container I use to strip the shells. That way I don't waste it. So you want to make sure you clean them. As soon as, as soon as I'm done painting one color, clean it out really good. And then I'll come back later and make some other color. The thing's all cleaned out, ready for the next color. So, All right, here it is, painted orange. Like I said, I just did I did like six coats. You don't want to put it on too heavy or run on you. So just put it on light. Then I take the hair dryer and dry it, get it dry, then put another coat over it, and then dry it again and repeat that process until I get the coverage I want. It usually takes about five, six coats. Um now if you're painting black or something, it doesn't take as much. Darker colors cover faster. But Another thing is, like, if you're just painting a steam locomotive and you did six passes on the locomotive, make sure you do six passes on the tender. That way, it's evened out and it looks right. And if you only did, like, three passes on the tender and seven on the locomotive, it might be a little different, you know, shade of color a little bit. So, always make sure you get your, you know, you do the same even coats on everything. So, I did six on this one. It's usually about what I use. How many coats I do on a locomotive takes about about six times to get good coverage so like I said and if you do get a run good thing about using this paint is you just take it in the house and take your toothbrush and put it under uh, water and wash it off and start over you don't have to strip it like in 91 alcohol or nothing and the primer will stay so if I would got a run in here or if I didn't like it you know, I just take it in the house and take a toothbrush with the water and just scrub it all back off. It come right back off pretty easy. So that's the good thing about this paint. If you make a mistake, it's easy to fix. So and like the spray can paints are real thick paint and then you have to strip it all. And I don't like the spray can paints because they fill in some of the details because I think they're a little thicker. So I like this paint. Works great. I can put 10 coats on there and it still won't fill in details because it's real thin, real thin coverage. That's what you do is light coat, let dry it, another light coat, and just build it up to where you want it. So that's the best best way, I think. All right, I got the roof all masked off. So I just use regular masking tape. It works fine. So I'll paint the roof. And then when I get the roof done, then I'll tape off and paint the top of the hood. And then uh, the walkway platforms, I'll just brush paint this black. All right, got all the black painted on the roof and on the 
top of the nose there. Yeah, a few little places to touch up. I'll do that with a brush. Like I said, I'll, I'll paint these walkways black with a brush. And I'll probably end up painting the yellow with a brush too. Alright, here it is all painted. All the, the top and the top of the hood painted. The walkways painted. The yellow down the side and front. The rear. And then we put uh, some white on the edges of the steps here. On all of them. Like I said, I hand painted the yellow, and then the walkways I hand painted the black with a brush, and then did the, the touch up where it needed to be here and there. Then also painted my number boards on the cab and on the rear black, so we can we can put the numbers on there. And then I clear coated it, put a nice coat of clear over it, and it's been dry overnight. So now I'm going to start decaling. Alright everybody, I'll show you how I lay these uh, striped decals down on this locomotive. I already did this side. The top line, the top stripes lay down really good and the other decals have too. And this weight and uh, the bottom decal over a lot of details under there. So it's taking a little bit longer to lay down. So when I put it on there, then I just go back every once in a while and dab some of the microsol on my Q-tip and I'll just go back and kind of Lightly, just put a little bit on those spots as it's drying. This one, this detail, this decal has been on there for about an hour, hour and a half or so, maybe a little bit longer, maybe two hours, probably an hour to two hours. And uh, just work with it. Just take your time. Now the other details are not so so high, and they've they've laid down pretty good. So just hit those. And as it's drying, I'll come back with my microsole and just dab a little bit on there every once in a while. And then we'll let it dry. We've been working around the front, got the details laid down pretty good. So now we gotta run stripes on this side. I've started my uh, bottom stripe there. So I got some stripes here um, drying or in the water here. So, we're going to do a little section on this top one real quick. I put that some micro sole on my Q tip, so I'll just wet that area. Well, I'll have to get some more. I'll just wet that area up just a little bit. And then get this off the paper, slide this over a little bit. And hold it with my Q tip or my uh, tweezers. And Get my toothpick here, and then what I'll do is just hang it off the paper just a little bit, overlap it. I'll hit, hold it with the Q-tip, slide right off. So now, whenever I overlap the de uh, decals, I let the one one decal dry good before I put the other one over top of it. Where that, if you don't do that, then the other one will get uh, the water and the micro soil on it and it'll move around too, then you'll be fighting both of them. And I just use my little toothpick here to get it lined up where I want. Pretty close. Let's move it around. Sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're a pain in the butt. But best thing you do is just take your time and work with it, get it where you want. Okay. There. It's pretty darn close. I think it needs to come up just a little bit. So move the front down.
There we go. Let's see. Yeah, it looks about right. I think. I ain't gonna touch it. I'll let that one just dry. And when it dries, if I need to, I can put some microsol over it to make it form around that bend any. There ain't really any details in that spot, so it should be okay. And then do this little front bottom one. I think. And here we go. And usually when you overlap them, you never see that edge. So that, that makes it nice. These K4 stripe decals are probably the best I've ever used. Micro scale sells them, but every time I use micro scales, they seem like they're thinner or something. They, they break really easy on me. And they have all kinds of problems. So I'll put this one on. Put a little bit of Marcus skip sole on there. And use my toothpick to kind of hold it in place. <coughs> this one's going to be a little long. So I'll just move it and overlap that other decal really good. That way I don't have to cut it off. It's in there where the steps are. Right there. Just slowly move it. Get it lined up with the other one. Right there. And let's see, it needs to come up a little bit in the back, it looks like. Let's see. I think, I think that looks good. Work that little bubble out. And then line it up with the front decal, the other decal on the front there. Double check it. Yeah. And then I'll roll it right around the corner. Think. Hmm. That back needs to go up just a little bit more, maybe. So, move that up just a little bit. That's pretty darn close right there. So, all lined up really nice. That's it. So, I'll leave that one alone for a while till it starts drying. And then, yeah, I got a bigger decal in here to, that's wet and ready to go. Now, the one thing with the K4, you have to trim your decals the size you want. Because that whole thing is one solid decal. So, like, see where the black, the black stops? I'll just cut it off. Right to the edge, nice and straight. Slide this one off there. So, some more micro scale or micro sole. I'm going to start right there. Get down to here. I don't know how far it'll go. Probably about that far. This long enough, I can hold my finger. So, it's on there. A little crooked. But we can move it around. There we go. Now we just gotta lay it down. We can bring it up this way a little bit. Around the corner. And a little bit more to come this way. Work it down around the K4. 
cat. That's where you get a lot of a lot of bubbles too in there under the decal around the corners. Just gotta work with them a little bit. And I think that one's almost perfect there. And we'll work around the back of the cab, down to the body, and then work your way to the piece there. Make sure you don't pull it back off the cab. So we'll slide the decal down a little bit. And a little bit more. Make sure there's enough decal in there to cover all that up really good. So, and then the bubble right there, just work it out. Just go up just a hair and around the back side. So, let's take a look at it here. Yeah, it looks pretty straight, I think. So, I think bottom ones are pain. All them details under there. It's hard to get them nice and straight. Go ahead and wet that up again. So, I think that's pretty good. It's starting to look pretty good. And it, I think sometimes it's a lot easier just to cut short, short strips instead of trying to do one big long one. Oh, it's a pain sometimes, especially when you got to go around everything and over the details. Just do short ones and then overlap them. <clears throat> and you can't really tell where I overlapped them. As long as you got them lined up good. So, <clears throat> starting to lay down better. When this one starts to dry, I get about... 20 minutes or so and then I'll dab a little bit more of the solution on there to help it conform around the corners and the details and stuff so I'll do that a few times and now I'm going to finish the pinstripe around it and then when I get ready to do the, the logos and stuff I'll show you how I put those on those are a lot easier because they're not really any details in them areas so it's just the stripes that are wrapping around the whole locomotive that's a pain in the butt but well, you take your time <clears throat> do the best you can and uh, it should turn out nice so we got all the black striping on turned out pretty nice that bottom stripe's not exactly perfect but oh well looks good good enough for me I guess so, now we're going to add these decals here to the other side. Let's we'll see how so we do that real quick. So, this has been dried overnight. So, take a little bit of the solution. And we'll start with the decal goes here. So we'll do that on there. These have been soaking in my lukewarm water for a few minutes. Slide it off there a little bit. Well, dang it. Okay, that's it up. Straight it out here. Take it off here. Get it back in the water. Go to the side. There we go. All right. Get it where we want.
Right about there, probably. And then we'll lightly tap it. Let that water and the air bubbles out to the edges. That's perfect. All right, and then we'll do the back one here. Let's see exactly where it needs to go. Do that rear one. It's on the last two doors, kind of centered in between them there. So that's where we'll go with this one. A little solution on there. And then my toothpick. See about where it needs to go. Boom. And then let's double check how high up, all the way to the hinges, center. So. Right about there, and then we'll tap the tap everything to the edges. Be careful, it don't move on you. It will move. Okay. Tap it on. Real soft and gentle. There. Since there ain't no details or anything there, those will sit down pretty nice and pretty easy. You might have to go back and once they dry for a couple minutes, go back over and maybe see if there's any more bubbles in there you work out. Just make sure. And then the logo, Indiana, Ohio. See where it's at on here on the doors so let's see one two three four five one two three four five so there's ten doors so we go right in the middle one two three four five one two three four five well so we're from the cab back one two three four five starts on the fifth door these k4 decals are great one two three four five we got the solution on it a little solution well some more here. So there's a couple details right there in that spot. So cover it pretty good. I say one, two, three, four, five. That's where it starts. Boom. Now we just move it into place. Double check. One, two, three, four, five. Back. One, two, three, four, five. Starts at the edge. Bring it down some. Bring the back side down some. Get this leg just a hair, maybe. That might be about it right there. We got one lined up. Five doors back. Five doors, which starts. And then the bottom of the I and O. Just barely touch that top. Black line. Make sure. One, two, three, four, five. Barely touches that top black line. So it looks pretty good. And then the 
this one details you probably have to dap, um, tap it down a couple times that for a minute or two. So it still moves. Let's see. Lost my toothpick here. Well dang, there it is. Make sure this is good and straight. Right there. Now I'm just gonna let this dry. As they draw, I'll give them about five minutes maybe, and then I'll dab them to try to get more of the air bubbles out. This one's over some details, so I'll have to work on it to set down a little bit better, but it will. And then with that one, I'll go back over, make sure no air bubbles not moving. So the only thing left to decal on here is the um, numbers on the side, and then the front boards and the back boards. But those are pretty simple. It's the same procedure. It's just a little solution. Put them on. I'll we'll have to do them individually. So just make sure you don't leave much of the solution, any puddles of the solution or water on there. Because when you put the first one down and leave a little water, you put the second one down, they all move. So they'll start moving on you and get them all straightened up. So it's best to do one, get it where you want. Sometimes it's best to start with the middle numbers. And work your way out each way that way you can get them lined up good and the black stripes i ended up doing um short pieces instead of big long ones i do a little short piece you know in there get it set real good then move to the next one so it took some time but i found out that that was a little better than but the first one i did a big long stripe and it was a real pain i had to pull it off and then i redid it in short strips but it's it looks pretty good so, turn out nice. So, I'll show you when I get a done decal here. These, when the decal, um, the bottom stripe decal, then those uh, hinges and stuff where the doors are, or they stick out pretty good. So as I put the solution over top of that decal and let it stretch and bond down on it, um, kind of tore a little bit because it stretched so much. Some of the orange paint was coming through the black on the hinges. But I just took my little black paint here and just, just dabbed, just covered it up with a little bit of black paint. And uh, matches almost perfect, so you'll never see it. Plus, another thing is these engines see a lot of use, so nothing's ever perfect. So if you do weather it, which I might do a little chalk weathering. I'm not sure it'll hide some of that stuff too so i'm not that great at weathering like some guys are yet hopefully one day i will be but i don't know but i'll probably do a little chalk weather just a little bit i'm gonna darken these vents in and stuff and maybe do a little bit around the walkway I mean, nothing too drastic because i still want it to look good so i'll show you after I get the finished decal and what it looks like. All right, here it is, all finished decal. So we had the black stripe decals, Operation Lifesaver decal, Indiana and Ohio badge decal, um, zero injuries decal, and then the IORY individual decals. Same with the road number. All the road numbers on the fronts and the rear are individually put on and then the small bat Indiana Ohio badge on the front the other side same way so and then the rear so they're sitting down pretty good looks like to me so I believe that's all the decals for this locomotive this is the Atherin locomotive that we're building. And the decals I used was uh, the white numbers out of this set from K4. 
there's the size and everything. Um, that's for the number boards on the front and the rear. And then black set from K4. Let's see what size are these? I'm not sure. I don't know if it's on there. I don't see it. He's they sell different sizes. But these I use the numbers for the size of the locomotive. <clears throat> then the badges I had made from Circus City. And then just an old set that I found off the internet. Not sure what brand they are. But this was for the I O R Y. And that's the size right there. An orange. And then we had we had these here. Fusion decals. Pretty good. I like these. The Operation Lifesavers. And then the zero injuries. Fusion. I got these off the internet. They're good decals. So if if you guys um if you all are decaling, micro scale decals are okay. But if you can go to like Circus City, he has so many different decals that you can get. Um or K4. Um go to their uh website or look on their eBay store. Um, their decals are a little bit thicker and easier to work with, I think. And they set down just, just fine. The micro scales are okay. I use them a lot still, but they're a little more brittle than the K4 and the Circus Cities, I think. So I try to use those two brands as much as possible because they're so much better to work for, work with. And they've got so much different uh, decals. And the black stripe decals are K4. So, all different sizes. These ones are 1 8 inch. An 8 inch wide. So, I think it turned out good. I've built a couple of these in the past, so they're getting easier for me. I don't know if I'll build any more here soon. I've got, this will be the third one of this paint scheme. I have one of the old paint scheme. But... All the ones I've done are local to me, Indiana and Ohio, on the Midland branch. So now, all we got to do is um, get the handrails on and paint those. They get yellow with a little bit of black going down the toward the steps, and then put it all put it all back together and run it. So I'll uh, go ahead and put the handrails on, and then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, here it is. It's all decaled now. I've got the handrails back on and I painted the handrails. So I put the handrails back all on, got them on there, and then use my yellow paint to paint the handrails, and then use my black paint to paint the handrail sections that go down by the steps on the locomotive here. I had to make one rail. I used the original rails. All but this one here. It's a, just a brass piece. The one that was with the kit was the wrong side. So after I got that all painted, I let it dry real good. And then I clear coat the whole thing real light. And then air dried it with my blow dryer. And uh, dried it pretty quick and then put another coat over the top of it. So, and when I did the clear coat, it ate a little bit of the decal black stripe, the bottom stripe around those, those door hinges. Those have been a real pain. So I had to go back and touch up a couple little spots with some of the black paint before I did the second coat of clear. But all the other decals I had no problems with. The upper stripe laid down perfect. Everything else laid down beautiful. The only problem I had was that, that bottom stripe down there where those hinges are for the doors. You can see it's not perfectly straight. So other than that, 
And always make sure you clear coat it before you put your windows back in too because it, it'll fog them up a little bit. So, it's not too bad. I'm still not happy with that bottom, that bottom stripe all the way around there. But, how much I can do about it. Tried to straighten it out a little bit with some black paint and stuff, but that just looks old. So now I'll take uh, my chalk. I got black chalk in here and my little brush that I use. Just put some on it and just rub it in these, these vents. Darken them up a little bit. So, after your clear coat dries, you gotta let the clear coat dry. So, and then let run a little bit down like that. Here and there. So, let's see. See how this makes it dirty? I'm not the greatest at weathering. This is just a quick little make it look dirty weathering technique that I do sometimes. Especially in these these grills because it just looks so much better I think when you darken these grills in. So and with the chalk it's pretty easy to do. You just get it in there and work it around. So And then like just run just a little bit down maybe. A little bit around there, top there. So Let's see. Blow blow the excess off. See, that looks pretty good, I think. And then you can do like the, let's see the walkways maybe. Maybe around a little bit on them stripes here and there. Try to See a little dirty here and there. Maybe a little bit here and there. I don't want to get too dirty because I still want it to look kind of nice. Because the Indian and Ohio locomotives, the, I mean, they're, they've got some dirt and grime and some little rust here and there, but they ain't, they're not like 30 year old paint jobs. So they ain't covered in rust. They're pretty decent looking locomotives. So we don't want to get too crazy. This is a newer paint scheme for them. I don't know how long it's probably been around 15, 20 years maybe. But they've changed the locomotives around a lot. So they keep, keep them in pretty nice condition. So we'll darken in this grill. And the chalk I use is just a pastel charcoal or the pastel chalks. You can get all different colors in the pastels. Do a little bit around there. See how I got all that? I'll blow that off. There we go. Maybe just a little bit run down here and there. You know, <sighs> nothing too crazy. Just some dirt. Look like it's about working. So let me uh, finish weathering this up a little bit, and then I'll show you. All right, I just uh, finished up the weathering with the uh, black charcoal pastel chalks. I've got all different colors, so I use that. And I won't clear coat after I use the chalk. I just uh, put the chalk on, and if you get it too heavy. You can just clean it off with a Q-tip, and if it's really bad, you can put just a tad of water on your Q-tip and clean it off. So, but mainly I just do the vents. 
blacking them in some maybe here and there some of the crevices i did the walkway at the where it meets by that bottom black line dirty that up um, a little bit here and there on the yellow and then ran the like the streaky lines down with the chalk with the brush front really didn't do too much a little bit on the yellow here and there but you really can't see it and the other side the same way just the vents run it down here and there so these locomotives are pretty clean I did a little bit on the a little bit down the center there but indiana and ohio usually keeps their locomotives pretty clean from what i've seen so i haven't seen any true rust buckets yet that's about it like i said well, i won't clear this i'll just leave it all right here's the chassis for that locomotive up there so what I did here, what I do to a lot of my afternoon locomotives, this little metal clip that goes on top of the motor that can, goes on the, to the trucks for the current to go through. These things get, sometimes they don't fit tight or not good connections. So the, to uh, fix that problem, just solder a wire from top of this metal piece that comes off that truck to the brass piece on top of the motor and then the same with the, the other truck connect them and they will have no more bad connections or anything a quick little easy upgrade or if you get a locomotive that don't have this it's just a quick easy fix you don't have to worry about coming loose always got the current going through there so shouldn't have any problems i went ahead and put an led in that locomotive as a headlight so i soldered it in there Wrapped it with some black tape there so it went short out on that metal. And now I'm going to do uh, the window and put the windows in. And I make my own windows. And I got these clear sheets here. It's pretty thin. A little bit thicker in paper maybe. I just cut out size I need. Cut out size a little bit bigger than the window. But make sure it still fits in there. And then I use... The school glue elmer's or cheap stuff it's all the same to glue it in with because if you use super glue or any other glues it kind of fogs them up so what i do is pour a little bit out and put a little bit on my brush and just go around the area on the inside where the window will be just a little bit you don't need to put a whole lot and then I'm a glass. I had to cut it out a little bit of an angle because there's a piece in there. So it would fit around it. Let's see here. All right. So let's put it in. And just drop it in there and slide it to exactly where I want. And the good thing about using the school glue is with your windows and stuff is if you get it on your window, just leave it. It'll dry clear. You won't really see it. So, I don't know if you can see a little bit of glare in there. And then this one, kind of hard to see them. But they that works good. Ain't that big, thick plastic glass that you always get with your atherin models looks more like real glass i think so now i'll cut them for the rest of them and glue them in Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one, but I kind of wanted to go through this, all the steps on how I 
repaint these locomotives. So maybe it'll help some of you if you decide to repaint and decal some of your locomotives. And it's not really that hard. This takes time, gotta be patient, take time. We did the Indiana and Ohio 3043. Another Atherin model originally, that was Santa Fe. And we just stripped it and repainted it and added decals and the LED headlight and dirtied it up a little bit. Took me about a week or so to do this complete model. So let me know down in the comments what you thought. And also, if you have any questions, maybe uh, I can go into doing a video just on maybe more painting or uh, just putting decals on or adding an LED headlight to a locomotive. Just let me know. I do a video just on, on that one thing. Maybe it helps some people out. If you have any questions about it or anything, we'll do that. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. Thanks.